There were not many positions during the medieval, Tudor, and even Stuart periods in history that allowed for vulgar speech and unconventional actions, and even fewer within the presence of nobility. But the unconventional role of Jester was one of the few exceptions to this. But how much of what we know about these medieval comics is really accurate, and how much is modern misconception? The role of jesters stretched from England to China and existed much earlier than you may have thought with such examples of jesters, known then as holy fools, being recorded within the 5th century Byzantium. However, this was a role that was much different than the later European jesters that we'll focus on, but it's worth a mention nonetheless. The role of jesters as entertainers began to find itself in written records during the 11th and 12th centuries. However, it was much less prominent than you may have thought, with jesters falling under the same name as pretty much every other entertainer, including singers, musicians, jugglers, and many others, under the name of minstrel, or little servant. However, into the latter of the 12th century, the occupation of Jester began to fill a much more prominent and permanent role in history, being recorded in plentiful documents under the fitting term of fool. However, despite its name, Jesters or fools were expected to be multi-talented and often quite intelligent. Moreover, this century provides insight into the impunity a jester was granted within their role, with one example coming from the rule of the French king Louis VI, where his jester was the only man willing to break the news of a failed battle to him, as others likely feared what may have happened if they were to openly state such news. Likewise, however, on the opposite side of this, it is not uncommon to find recorded examples of jesters being killed or banished if they took their joking too far such as Tribalet, who took his jokes too far and was sentenced by the king, but managed to survive by asking that his death be by old age. Go figure, a jester had a clever response to even his own conviction. However, despite what you may picture when it comes to medieval jesters, the role itself consisted of much more than simply acting a fool. The day-to-day -day lives of a fool included purchasing livestock, serving, and houndkeeping amongst other daily duties. Not to mention the expectation that a jester should be able to sing, dance, joke, and play an instrument. Which is why the comedic actions we think of when we hear the term of jester were often reserved for special occasions and events, as it made such events enjoyable and most importantly, something to remember. Not to mention that court jesters were frankly not needed all that often. However, being memorable is what aided in the popularity of jesters amongst nobility, such as King Edward II and III who both owned jesters themselves, under the name of Robert, regardless of their actual names. But what exactly were the benefits to being a jester? Well, frankly, not much if you were a regular jester. However, if you were lucky enough to be favored by nobility or well known for your talents, it'd be common to receive land upon retirement and periodic payments, and on occasion, very vast payments for single performances. Such as one example from the wedding of Edward I's daughter, in which Tom the Fool would receive 50 shillings for his single performance, or about 240 days work for the average man. As for land, examples are such. In 1086, Jester Adeline would receive land upon their retirement, and in the 12th century, a jester named Ronald would receive 30 acres of land, permitted that he showed up on Christmas Day each year to entertain the monarch. However, by the 13th century, some jesters became stars themselves, even outside of their household, and on some occasions, this resulted in the jester not just receiving land, but even their own horse and servants too. But this luxurious lifestyle was not a commonality between jesters, and many would find themselves struggling if they were not multi-talented or established within a household. But regardless, at this point, you may think that being a medieval jester was not all that difficult, and inherently pretty safe considering the periods in which they existed. However, that is where you are wrong. Wrong. Despite having daily duties and the occasional act or court, jesters were also expected to act as messengers for their masters during battles. And despite probably not looking like this, you can definitely understand how terrifying and likewise dangerous this task must have been, even more so when you realize that they were messengers between leaders themselves. A role which indefinitely resulted in some jesters being killed or catapulted back to their army. Yes, catapulted, and sometimes in more than one piece. However, this was not a jester's only role during a battle, as they also used their talents for more fitting actions, such as keeping soldiers calm and morale heightened using their humor, while simultaneously insulting the opposing forces. With one example from the 15th century resulting in the death of Jester Taufer, when he angered the opposing Anglo-Saxon force so much through his mockery and sword juggling that they would eventually charge on him. 
However, through the latter of the 13th century up until the 16th century, the role of jesters began to evolve, and what the role looked like differed greatly depending on several factors, such as why they were employed. A jester employed by nobility lived a rather normal life, often being highly educated and wearing normal clothing, such as 15th century Polish jester Stanchik, who is recorded as being witty and intelligent, being recorded using his impunity to say rather important but sometimes unpleasant things to nobility. However, during these periods, jesters began to be hired out for much worse reasons, such as having severe disabilities, where their masters kept them more as pets rather than as workers. These jesters were often provided with nothing more than food and shelter, and were referred to as innocent fools. And in this case, if their master was no longer entertained by them, they could simply get rid of them. Lastly, the final type of jesters that were prominent during these times were a group that kept the classic costuming and were often found at markets, fairs, or the Feast of Fools, and were particularly popular in France under the name Fool Societies. These jesters held the one simple role of entertainment. Finally, by the 17th century, the role of jesters as talented and witty entertainers largely began to fade, with such jesters shifting their skills to performing arts and large stage acts rather than in court or royal housing. And by the 18th century, records of jesters in royal households gradually began to dry out, with one of the final examples being Pergil, jester for Charles III Philip. However, this did not mean that the role was obsolete entirely, and even less so outside of Europe. The role of jesters spread vastly and extensively throughout Russia, who adopted the practice, in which it remained for a number of years. Ultimately, the role of jester evolved vastly throughout medieval Europe, and required many more talents than you may have thought. From the classic household jester, to those who held prominent roles in court, the lives of these men and women depended largely on why they were employed, and who they were employed by, with some jesters living out their lives on vast properties, while others struggled to survive, demonstrating just how volatile life as a jester really was during the medieval ages. And now for jesters, we have Matt Rife, if that even counts. Anyways. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or would like to add your own additional information, do so in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing for future content. Thanks.